My name is Steve Hodge. I am currently the program chair for production and engineering at uh, IPR. My philosophy of education comes from the very beginnings of my career, uh, where my main mentor, uh, Val Valentin, uh, that, that was his ethic: is that not uh, when we come into a, a place of work in our business, uh, we are going to be taught everything we know from masters of that craft to begin with. Uh, all they asked us in return was to, when once we become proficient, to pass that knowledge on. And I've carried that through my career from day one to day now. And working at IPR uh, and working on the education, strictly educational side of the business, is just an extension of what I've done in my entire career. The cultural IPR vision for training students in the current uh, market environment is to create an educational experience that is as well-rounded as possible. The way that the business is set up now, not only do you have to be proficient as an engineer, but you also have to be knowledgeable as a producer, as an artist, as a marketer of not only yourself, but of the product you create. I have had to expand my knowledge base both in my professional career. It's another great thing about education of this type. You have people who are standing in front of you teaching who, and for the rest of their time, are standing in front of clients uh, creating material. So just like we have, I have to teach my students how to fit into the modern world, I have to continue to teach myself how to fit into the modern world. So while I was very well trained as an engineer, I wasn't the greatest producer. I've worked on that part of my career over the last 15 years to become a better producer. And the amount of work that I get is pretty much e evenly balanced between production and engineering at this point. As part of both of those things, it's also dependent upon me to be able to put down a guitar part if I need to. Uh, to be able to sing a harmony if I need to show somebody what a harmony is. And I've had to work on those parts of my game uh, the same way that we have to work on those parts of our students' game as they're going through the educational process. We get a lot of students who come in who are, uh, they are interested in what we teach, but they are intimidated about the nature of it. Uh, a lot of them, besides being intimidated, just really don't know what's required uh, to make it in what a lot of people consider to be a very glamorous business. Um, I've taken special notice of that and I have asked to be placed into a special first quarter class that's part of a series of classes we do that's based on careers so that I can deliver my message specifically about that uh, to all the first quarter students that are coming in, not just the APE students, the production and engineering students, but the business students and the sound design for visual media students as well. It's a very important thing that I learned when I was starting out. And by the end of this first quarter, you will have uh, a great example of the fact that you can do it. The AP 152 class, which is a desktop production class, where they are immersed head and shoulders uh, into the world of the digital side of our business, which is very daunting and very complicated. Um, in quarter one, we get a, in, the, in week one of that first quarter, we get a lot of complaints from students. I don't think I can do this. By the end of that class, that is one of the best reviewed classes in the entire school. And the reason is, and we get this in the reviews of the class, is the students are so proud of the fact that something they thought was so impossible on day one becomes not only possible as they go through the class, it becomes something that is a given. And that's one of the most rewarding moments that I have at the school. We've set up our curriculum to create a specific workflow to get our students acclimated to our different facilities as they go through the program. Um, a first quarter student coming into the school uh, is immediately comped into, is how we put it, uh, one of our studios that becomes their first classroom. Uh, they learn how to use the studio as part of that class. But also as part of that class, they are required to do their own work in the studio as well. Once they finish that first quarter, then they are able to book that studio for their personal projects. And then each quarter, more studios are added to that list of studios that the student becomes familiar with during the course of a class that can, they can then book for their personal time outside of class hours. So that by the time they are about halfway through the program, they have access to nearly all of the facilities that we have at the school. Um, 
we build it into the curriculum, which is how it works best for us. Uh, as last advice is most often my first advice, um, the soft skills. We are told this time and time again by our uh, program advisory committee. We ask them, you know, what is it that not just gets prospective employees in the door, what keeps them in the door? Is it their technical knowledge or is it their ability to interface and work with people? And the answer is always their ability to interface and work with people. As technology advances, a student or an employee who works well with people can be taught. A uh, an employee or a student who comes in uh, with great technical knowledge but can't work with people, that's a whole nother story. Uh, that's a very difficult future to follow. Uh, so the uh, exit advice is the same as that beginning advice. Look in the mirror. And when you look in the mirror, don't just uh, don't just look at what your technical skills are. Look at who you are as a human being and how you truly relate to other human beings. And don't think that just because you are the way you are at that particular moment in time, that you cannot work on your personality, on your personal skills, just as hard as you work on your technicality and your technical skills.